Hi everybody, this is Eric Altman, sales engineer with Vodia Networks, and today we're going to talk about the new Vodia app for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Quick overview, I'm not going to read all of these here, but this is what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about the features, things like transferring calls, voicemail, recording, settings, all that. Uh, again, I'll just dive right in here so we can uh, see the slides and, and see what this is all about. First of all, the uh, supported uh, operating systems on this. We do support the latest and greatest operating systems on the market, being Windows, uh, Linux, many different flavors, and uh, Apple Mac OS. So this app can be run on all of those. Today we'll be talking uh, mostly about the Windows version, but basically the same regardless of the OS. So at a glance here, I'm going to take a minute or two on this slide just to explain the screen to you so you understand what you're looking at. Over here on the left, you've got the uh, user view. This is what we're looking at here, all the different users. You'll notice there's uh, two other buttons over here, so you can look at just your recent users that you've contacted, and you can even build a favorites list. So if you click either of these, it'll show you that list uh, instead of the all user view. You've also got a uh, presence, uh, these little dots here, red dots means they are not available. Uh, if you see the green dot, that's available for everything. And then there's also a blue dot that may show up, which means that you're actually registered to a phone, but not registered on the app. Uh, up at the top, we've got a couple of different uh, call control type of things, and we'll get a little deeper into these, but this button here is for forwarding your calls. You can also toggle on or off, uh, do not disturb. Here in the middle of the screen is the actual call that you're on, and uh, there are different icons here, which we'll uh, talk about in a later slide of, again, controlling the call, putting it on hold, transferring and such. Uh, you also have ongoing call over here in the calls and domain. So this is going to show you all the calls that are going on in that domain. Uh, even if you're not on the phone, you would see the other calls that are going on and both parties that are involved. And then you've got a choice here to uh, tie this to your desk phone. Um, so uh, again, you can use the app uh, with your desk phone, or you can just do it through the web uh, using WebRTC. You can make and receive calls just using the app. So in this home view, if you were to click one of these users, uh, you'll see three dots to the right. And if you click the three dots, uh, you'd have these choices. You can either make a call, uh, text, or message that user or add them to your favorite list. Up here, when you don't have a, an active call going on, it's going to give you an overview of your total amount of calls, uh, inbound calls, outbound calls, and missed calls. So you'll have the uh, total over here, as well as what makes up that total. And then there's a, a little tile here showing the user agent information. So this is the actual person's app. Uh, it's going to show you their name and their extension on there as well. So transferring calls. Uh, when you're in a live call, again, you're going to have these uh, different icons here. And this third one here is to transfer the call. So if you go ahead and you click that transfer while you're on a live call, it's going to bring up a window like you see over here uh, where you can enter an extension number or an external number. Once you press transfer, off the call goes. And you'll also notice here that you can drag and drop an extension right there as well. So we do support the drag and drop. At the top of the uh, page, you'll see this menu here, so we'll just kind of go across here and talk about the different things that you see here. We were looking at a, uh, our home view before, and now we're in the calls view. So this is going to be your call history. It's going to show you your incoming and your outgoing calls by date and by time. And again, you've got these uh, three uh, dots over here. When you click those, you're going to get the option to actually call the person, uh, SMS, or message that person. Uh, and delete uh, the call as well. Um, or again, you can return the call by, by clicking on here. Instant messaging. So on the next uh, part of that menu, you got messages. So this is just showing the message exchange that was going on. Users can send instant messaging uh, internally. Uh, they'll receive a notification on incoming messages as well. So that'll pop up down at the bottom of the screen. You'll see a new message from that extension. Um, you've got a call button up here if you want to actually call that user. Uh, new message field. This is where you're going to put in the message that you're sending out. Uh, we even support sending images. By clicking on here, you can actually send an image out uh, as well as text. 
Uh, you can obviously close the chat from here. And then you can actually uh, post notes. This could be a private note um, to, to this user that we're talking to, or you can make it public where it's a note that's posted to everybody. Moving across, uh, we get to voicemail. So your basic options here in voicemail. Uh, again, by clicking the three dots, you can call that person back, uh, message them, or SMS if your uh, trunk provider supports that. Um, we work with bandwidth, a couple others, where you can actually SMS externally, uh, or you can just message internally. Uh, listening to the voicemail is just by clicking on the little recording uh, icon right here. You can delete the voicemail. Uh, you'll notice there's a search field up here, so if you have more than just the two messages we see here, you can search for those messages. Um, paginator as well, so you can see it in a full page. Um, if you do have more than the full page, you'll have that one, two, three on the bottom, be able to get to the different pages. You'll see the contact's name and number and the date and time. Uh, the duration of that voicemail will show up here as well. And again, you can just click to play. You have the audio player down here where you can move it forward or backwards. So you can have some track controls there. And again, uh, if you want to call the person back, just click the phone icon. Everyone here will have their own uh, personal address book. So each user has their own personal address book. You can upload contacts uh, using a CSV format. So you can export contacts from another application save it as a CSV file and then import it uh, right here so you'll you'll notice here we're choosing the file to import contacts and you can click and uh, call or SMS uh, the contact again if your trunk provider supports it uh, if you want to add contacts manually it'll bring up these fields right here you can put in their names and numbers uh, even a speed dial for them uh, and uh, add a contact one at a time manually. And of course, we have a search bar in here as well. Uh, if you have a lot of uh, contacts, you're able to search them up, up using this search bar. Uh, moving across, uh, we've got recordings. Uh, so users can activate ad hoc recordings. So while you're on a call, this fourth icon here. So we've got, you know, hang up here. We've got uh, put on hold, transfer, and then recording park and a, an actual uh, dial pad if you need to dial DTMF or something along those lines. But talking about recording, you would just click here uh, and that'll start recording the call. And then if you go into this recordings tab, it'll show your latest recordings by date, time and duration. Click the musical note uh, if you want to play that recording. And again, you can call uh, text or uh, delete the message from here. ACD, so we've got some great things with uh, ACD. If you've got uh, contact center cues, you can see all kinds of uh, stats here. You've got the uh, date range drop down, uh, total calls, your inbound, outbound, and missed calls are there as well. Uh, you've got an abandoned call percentage, so you can see who's abandoning calls or at least a percentage of them. Uh, transferred percentage as well. You've got average speed of answer here, so you can know how quickly your calls are getting uh, answered, as well as this uh, interactive uh, line chart, which will show your speed of answer as well as your calls during the day, so you can uh, toggle between those two. Uh, you've got the time here. This, this time is going to show how long they were in the uh, auto attendant, how long they waited, and how, how much time it was actual talk time as well. Um, down at the bottom, uh, you've got the different agents in this particular queue. You'll notice at the top, <coughs> excuse me, you can uh, choose the queue that you want to look at, and it'll show you those agents. If you click on there, you're going to see uh, the calls that they've made and uh, different types of stats there as well, hourly call volume and a daily call count. So you've got inbound, outbound, missed uh, here down below. Um, you've got the abandoned calls, uh, details as far as the name, number, and date. Uh, and again, the duration and waiting time and talk time is going to show here in this ACD time uh, graph. Call redirection. So users can set their own call forwarding. Uh, if they need to divert calls to another user or an outside line, uh, that would be invoked by uh, clicking on this icon here. And then you have options. Do you want to forward all calls or just calls when busy, calls on no answer, 
uh, what is no answer so you can uh, choose the default value set by the administrator or choose your own of what's considered a no answer timeout so that co call can be forward it can be forwarded when not registered uh, do you want to forward it when someone's calling the uh, extension directly to go to your cell phone you have uh, choices there uh, as well as just inbound only and of course your cell phone number is here so it knows where to forward to that and does the voicemail answer on the uh, app or on the phone um, or are you receiving calls on the app uh, yes or no and where is the voicemail going to as well once you filled in all the fields there's a save button at the bottom to go ahead and save your settings for the call redirection do not disturb so you have this icon uh, up here you can turn it on turn it off when it is on, you do have options as far as uh, why are you on Do Not Disturb. Is it because you're in a meeting, on a break, on vacation? And that's going to show on the extension list. You'll see right next to the uh, extension itself, Barbara Colnum is on Do Not Disturb, and the reason is she's in a meeting. So you'll see that. Uh, everybody can see that who's looking at the user list. The account menu here, uh, you've got uh, the details uh, as far as uh, status, so you've got a few different options here. Your settings, uh, so you can uh, define different settings. Uh, conferences, you can build conferences from here. Uh, buttons, uh, log in with a QR code, uh, and log out. You'll see down here it's showing the buttons, you'd select your Mac. Uh, and then use one of the templates that's already been created for that particular phone. If you go into your settings, that's where you can upload a profile picture, uh, put in first name, last name, uh, as well as position if you prefer to put that in there as well. And you'll notice that there is a, a menu here for call forwarding, uh, your cell phone, uh, CRM, and, and mailbox. As we go through that, we looked at call forwarding before. Here's where your cell phone number would be put in here. Uh, do you want a special menu uh, when uh, someone calls and it's answered on the cell phone? Uh, and different options when the cell phone calls the PBX. Uh, if someone's calling the extension directly, do you want it to go to the cell phone? Or, and also you have the options of if you're getting called as an extension in a hunt group, should it forward out to the cell phone and same in an agent group in a in a call center queue we've got seamless integration with the most popular crm vendors uh, on the market uh, zoho salesforce and sugar uh, so up here at this uh, account menu here you would choose crm you'll see those there choose the one uh, that you're using uh, and allow you to go ahead and uh, provision that account so that uh, they're tied together Mailbox setting, this is for your, uh, for your voicemail, but users uh, you know, can control their own mailbox settings. Uh, are they receiving faxes? Is the mailbox enabled or disabled? How long until it picks up? What's the maximum number of messages? Uh, do you want name announced or just anonymous? Uh, do you want to send a message waiting indication to the phone and call the cell phone? Uh, and uh, where, where it would go if, uh, if it's not getting any response from you, the escape account. Here's where you can actually uh, build a conference. Um, so uh, over here, you can put the name of the conference, uh, the, the start uh, date uh, and time, uh, participants that are going to be in the conference, and their phone numbers. The nice thing about that is if you do put their numbers in here, you can automatically initiate calls at the start time. Uh, you can record this conference regardless of how your recordings are set on the PBX. If you just want to record this conference, you can turn it on for this particular conference. You've got a room drop down for the different conference rooms that are available. And then for entering or exiting the conference, uh, you can decide if you want it to play a tone or anything like that. Again, like everything, once fields are all filled in, you'll hit the save button down at the bottom and save that conference. QR code, so again under this account menu here, if you choose QR code, it'll bring up that uh, QR code icon and uh, you can use your phone's camera to scan that and actually provision the account with that QR code.
And down here, again, the calls and domain is going to show all the active calls that are going on, regardless of whether you're on a call. Uh, you'll see that. You can actually make it full screen over here as well, and you'll see the caller ID information of who's talking on the phone, as well as the extensions uh, for the users. This is where you can uh, set up your buttons from here under your account as well. So you're going to select the MAC address uh, with uh, uh, the registered phones. So those will show up in the drop down. Uh, what template you're going to be using. And then if you need to make any changes to the button configuration, you can do that right here. By clicking on the arrows, you'll see the different options that you have per button. And again, once you're done, go ahead and uh, hit save. And these are going to reflect on the uh, desktop phone. Here's the active call view again. So you're going to see that persistent active call view. It's going to show the contact name, their number or extension, uh, timer for the call. And again, you've got hang up, hold, transfer, record, park, or the uh, dial button to bring up the dial pad. That's what the dial pad looks like. Uh, you can close it, obviously. Input digits uh, for DTMF and the buttons as well as the special characters are included in there. Now for installing this, uh, one of the keys is you have to be running the 64.0 version or higher. So don't try to install this on a lower version. You need to make sure that you're upgraded. Uh, check your license maintenance uh, for upgrade information if you need to upgrade. Uh, you can go ahead and go in there and uh, set it up so that you're on the full subscription maintenance and upgrade to 64 or higher. And if this is hosted, the PBX has to be resolvable. Doing this on Windows, uh, you may get this uh, Windows Defender uh, popping up. Um, telling you it's an unrecognized app and might put your PC at risk. If you click on the More Info button, it'll give you the option here to run it anyway. So go ahead and hit Run It Anyway, and uh, the installation will proceed. And so here, when you're logging in uh, to the app, you're going to go ahead and uh, use the URL, HTTP, MyPBX.com, or if it's a premises-based, uh, the IP address of the PBX. Put in your extension your web password, and then you can choose the language uh, that you want to use with this. Uh, you can also check this box to remember your login information. So now when you click the icon, it'll just start up and you won't have to put in that information every time. And here are the uh, links to download the app itself. So for Windows, you've got a link uh, for Linux and for Mac. Um, so you can refer back to this, um, but those are the links that you would use to actually download the app at this time. And that'll conclude what I had here for you today. Hopefully this was informative, um, and uh, you'll go ahead and download it and start using it. It's a, it's a great app. It's a sticky app. Once people start using it, they get very used to it and want to continue to use it. So. I, uh, I hope you guys get started, and uh, if you have any questions, you can contact us at support at Vodia.com. You can contact me as well. I'm Eric, and my email is ea at Vodia.com, or you can call us 617-446-1399, and my extension is 451. Thank you again, everybody, and have a great day.